Welcome back to the Tegra Race to Rally series. Today we are at the Phil Price Rally School and I'm getting my bars, well hopefully getting my bars rally license. As you already know, I've been racing for years. With racing, you have an ARDS license, but that license isn't transferable. So I need to actually get a rally license. We booked Phil Price because here they offer a full day of training and your license. It looks like quite an exciting place already. I think it's gonna be driving around gravel lanes in a Subaru, hopefully, and then I'll do my license. I've got to do a 20 question test which I'm a little bit nervous about because obviously all the things with circuit racing, like all the different flags and, and everything else is pretty straightforward. Rallying, the signs are all very much unique to rallying. So it's not something that you can translate to if you've been go-karting, for example, or anything like that. It's, it's a very uh, specific thing. I did do a little mock test last night and uh, I got 12 out of 20. So uh, practiced a few times and eventually got to 20 out of 20. I think you're allowed to get one wrong or there's a set of 10 that you can't get any wrong and a set of 10 that you can get one wrong or something like that. So yeah, hopefully I'll learn through the day as well. It, when you do your ARDS license, you get, well, when I did it, you got given a, a video to watch and it was kind of all of the things that you will have to be, have to know and get tested on. Whereas with the rally uh, license, you get given a, some videos to watch, but they don't really tell you what you're gonna get asked in the test. And it just says refer to the section of the blue book, which is all about rally. Well, that section's really in depth and there's, there's so much detail. So I know all my signs, I know various different distances that, that you need to be um, aware of. So yeah, fingers crossed that goes all right um, and we'll go and have some fun. So we're actually parked up uh, on the lane outside the, um, the venue. So with rallying, you get penalties if you arrive early. And, uh, and on the instructions for the, the rally school, it said, do not arrive before 9 a.m. So uh, we've got five minutes to, to hang around before we get there. Looks pretty exciting, doesn't it? Looks fun, doesn't it? It's an odd one. <laughs> this is obviously the one they don't trust you in. Jeez, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two steering wheels in here. <laughs> just say that must have took some bloody engineering. Jeez, yeah. To get two inputs into a steering rack. Yeah. Mental. LPG. Well, PG. <laughs> Not always smashing around. We've got a bomb beyond this as well. Yeah. <laughs> well, you have it. So time cards, so you want to come across time card before. So there's some information that you'll have on your time card. So when you get your time when you go and get your time card from HQ, first thing you want to do when you get it is check you've got the right amount of time cards. So you're on the start line, you're, you're at 9.32 and you start at 9.33 and you're going to go. Yeah? We would just sort of say, just know what you're doing and go and follow your own yeah, yeah. Like yeah. even road sections, don't follow other cars on road sections. They go wrong. Yeah. Don't follow them wrong. So you go past there at nine o'clock, get there, give me time card, nine o'clock please. There you go. Give you nine, get your time card back. Make sure they put your time in it, make sure they've signed it. They're gonna give you a provisional time then. And your main job as a driver is to don't cross that yellow board until you're told to. Yeah. It's really easy when the car in front of you just drives through and up to and you just, you follow, just follow them in. Right. A due time was ten forty. Yeah. The time we got there was ten forty. So that's the, that's the arrival at the first stage. So yeah. What happens, so this is a 25 minute road section, you've gone from the main control, you get within a mile of the forest, and there's cars back up the side of the road, with weights all having a week, you've got your helmet so because when you get to that yellow board at the start, start of the stage, you must be ready to start the stage, you must yeah. get your helmet on, 
everything done up, extinguishers on, you've got to be ready to start stage when you go past that yellow board. So when you're in the control, you've got to be ready to yeah. go. Okay? So your start time for the next road section is 10.53. Drop the seconds off and you yeah. write that then. There. Fine. No seconds, yeah? Yeah. Time cards come in all shapes and sizes and different boxes here and there. And you're like, oh my God, what's this one? You know? But the same information's on them. That's what you're looking for. On a single venue, they're a little bit different. Stage five, due time, actual time at the start line, at the, at the red board. Then you'll have your three minutes normally. So stage start time is in green, look. Yeah. And stage finish. And I think they do that to make it easier just to add time to up. Yeah. I can't think of any other why, reason why you flip the, rain. To flip the times, really. Do you know the difference between root notes and pace notes? Pace notes are based on speed, basically, aren't they? Yeah. Root notes are describing the road giving you information about the road, aren't they, basically? Yeah. But pace notes are giving you information about the road, but they're based on speed. Yeah, okay. Probably when you make your own yeah. idea, pace notes. Yeah. When they make for you, they're really doing something. Yeah. Yeah. So this is going to be, basically, what you'll have as your navigational aid for a single venue, something like this. It'll just be a book of stages. So although it's a single venue, they will only run the same stage twice. First stage, that'll be run twice, so two stages. Then they'll go for the next one, and they will have changed something minor about it. So what have they changed? Yeah. This bit here, yeah, yeah. So that's that's what they've changed. Yeah, that's going down there, and that's good. Yeah. So yeah, that's up in, the, up in there. So the queue. Yeah. So they changed it a fair bit. Yeah. yeah. So it's a new stage for stage yeah. three. Stage three and four. Same, and then five and six. We're starting here then, going the other way, and they've probably all they've done is stop the start and finish train, and then. These next two will probably be the same as the first ones, but run in reverse. Yeah. I would imagine. Okay. Yeah. You will come up with uh, a way that your co driver is going to explain this to you as you're going around because it's going to mean something to you. Yeah. Angles of bends, lengths of straights, yeah. where your chains are, yeah. everything else. So you'll come up with that for yourself. Stops. Yeah. So John called it five and finish, so you compete through that. The co driver should still continue to give you information after that board. Right. Because you might go over over the finish board and it'd be a really tight corner straight after. So you need to hear, don't switch off at the finish line. A lot of drivers do kind of just, just mentally switch off a little bit as you get to that finish board and miss the corner after and maybe even crash after the finish line. Because the co-drivers either not read the next thing or they've switched off. So there you've got finish, so you've got um, right six long, flat right six long, over into finish. 200 slippy, small crest long, 100. So you've gone over the finish line, so you stopped competing, but you're still doing, probably. Mm, fast. You're going fast. So you need to and know slippy, what's down here. Yeah? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? You plugged I'm in. Not plugged in. Okay. <laughs> it's just over here. In this. Me and James use different co-driving techniques, but I'm going to use fast, medium and slow, I think, for today. Okay. Just because it becomes easier. Six-speed box, we'll probably only get up to four. Yeah. Um, be gentle with it, it's only a standard synchro box. Yeah. Right, so it's just nice and smooth with our gear change. All the inputs that we want to use, we want to be smooth. Same with the track, isn't it? Everything's got to be smooth. Stay in the tracks that are there, because that's where your grip is. Yeah. The two tracks. We don't okay. want to be deviating out of that at all. Right. All right, that's your priority, is staying in the lines. And just the smoother you can be, get your entries right, the corners become fast. Okay. Your speed will just appear yeah. if we do the thing, get the process right. So I've got, if I need to help, I can. Yeah. Okay, I don't want to. Yeah, okay. I've got an engine cut, so I may use that. I probably won't use it this time because we're going for a look around. Right. All right.
So I held up pretty well considering I did a lap with it like that. Do you know where you did it or was it just straight rock? I or? don't know if I did it or not really. It just, just kind of happened. I didn't go off track at all. It's so unnatural though. Like I'm used to driving a road car down like a lane and you're, you're tiptoeing and making sure that you don't hit a bump or you scrape the underneath. Whereas now it's like aim for the ruts. The ruts are what give you grip. Straight line where you can. It's mental. Like completely goes against what you think you need to do because you don't need to, well, you're trying to go fast. necessarily being absolutely the fastest everywhere. It's about making sure, number one, you don't lose time. As soon as we get tire on that bit, you just, front tire's just gonna understeer then. Or snap over steer maybe if you get a rear tire on there. We can't touch that bit. And that bit is super loose because it's not just the loose that's been left there, it's all that stuff scattered on top of it. So it's really slippy. So we've got a piece that we've got to avoid, but then actually, because it's been more swept rather than these two perfect tracks, we have, do have a wider area. 
So then, the grip's fairly consistent from this point to this point. You can lead it back in, but you can only bring it back in, you can. Yeah. Right, should we go? Let's go. Excellent, All right, we'll head out right towards the starboard. We'll imagine we've got our time for this stage. Right, yeah, so let's just head down to the left hand side. Okay, so let's go. So 60 metres, slight left over the crest. 40 metres, easy drive. So we've got over the road, down the back, easy drive. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah? Well, like, I felt like I was understanding you more, like I kind of knew a little bit more what was coming. Yeah, okay, that's, yeah. Also, you helped. you were giving me meters. John didn't give me meters. Right, okay. So I think that might have helped a little bit more. But yeah, felt good. What well, I didn't have any big understeer moments. And what was the difference? How come you didn't get the understeer? What were you doing differently? Well, I think I used first gear on every Airbin, yeah, okay. Whereas sometimes I was using second gear. And so that entry speed was a little bit, just bring it down a little bit to get yeah. the front turned in initially. Yeah, that too high entry speed to begin with just pushes Pushed the front. Out, yeah, yeah, okay, interesting. What about throttle pickup points when you're getting onto the power? Yeah, maybe a little bit better, but. Right, okay, because it, like, there was one time, the very one of the very first hairpins we did down here, the hairpin left a little bit earlier in the power, and we just ran to the bank on the outside. Yeah. but. The next hairpin straight away instantly, I saw that you just Realized. waited till it just turned that little bit more, a bit left before, then you went, and yeah. we just got 
like a, you could just be more confident going yeah, to full yeah. throttle rather than just or managing the front a little bit. On the on the exits of, of most of them though, it is loose. Yep. On the far exit, isn't it, it is like, right on the very outside. Yeah. The clean line goes so far, and then you've just got this like yeah, strip yeah. of very loose, which you don't want to get to that full outside bit. You want to use the grip for the yeah. exit. Yeah, super smooth. That was great. That's like for me. That's one of the key things. Like as soon as you start adding lots of unnecessary little inputs in, you're just making the car unstable. You're losing grip for the tyres. None of that. That was great. Really smooth. That. Brilliant. Good on the brakes. Nice. Like that press was like a, a squeeze, and I can feel the car slowing and gripping in, not like locking up and sliding. That was nice. Yeah, driving really well. Good. You through this S bend on the top. There's a fast. Um, it goes sort of. The first time we approach, it goes left, right, slightly tighter left. There's two deep ruts in there, and you drove it perfectly in the ruts. It was really quick through there, and you really committed to that rut, which is great, as long as it sticks in that rut, because it pops out of that rut at that sort of speed. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, like, everything you did was perfect. I'm not saying change anything, but just be aware that if it, if it does, if it rides up that sort of lip and pops out, it's really loose in the outside of corners like that. So it's good to trust the ruts and use them, but uh, yeah, that was very quick for that. Yeah, it was. Okay. I was, uh, I was thinking this is, it's a good bit. Yeah, you've got to be ready for that. Okay. Very well cool. driven. All right, thank you. Excellent. Yeah, well, uh, head on back. No bootleg, baby, I get pushed to you like Lupe. Fight for your love like Luke Cage. Drunk in love if I don't say. What you saying? We ain't playing. Nah, love, we just getting started. Was fast car, but I had to park it. Not quick to give up my heart, but I fought it for your love. Well, I've just passed my bars course. I had an amazing day here at the Phil Price Rally School. I did the bars plus, which we'll put a link to on the, uh, in the video. But basically it was a full day of rally and we got here at 9 a.m. and it's now half three and I've done nothing but drive around in two and practice all day. This blue one, the uh, GDB, was for the gravel rally stage, which is like up over the top of the hill. Um, you'll see some of the onboards. Drove around initially, kind of getting a feel for it and understanding what it was all about. The thing that was amazing about it was how much difference there is between being online and being offline with the grip. And then this is a, a GC8, which is set to a rear wheel drive, which is just for this kind of bit of a drift stage. So they've got a water truck and they water it down. It's actually on road car rear tires and rally front tires um, to learn car control with it all moving around. We went through a load of videos and a load of um, lessons on the details of rallying. So I know the signs and how an event runs and then just kept them going out in both cars doing more and more. Uh, it was incredible. I can't actually believe how much fun it is gravel rallying uh, an Impreza. Coming back to the Civic is going to be a little bit different, obviously, the, on tarmac compared to being a four-wheel drive on gravel. The main thing is I passed. So, uh, yeah, on to our next actual real event now. And uh, yeah, we'll see how we get on. Thank you very much to uh, John and James as well. They've been amazing instructors. And anyone who's thinking of doing their rally licence, definitely come and do it here because it's called a Bars Plus and it's a full day and it's only a couple of hundred pound more than a normal Bars test, but you get to actually drive a car on gravel as opposed to uh, lots of the other schools where it's just a tarmac rally driving. I'm pretty sure that Phil Price Rally School is the only place in the country that does the Bars Plus. So it's kind of their idea where instead of you just turning up, doing three laps, um, doing your theory test and, and off you go. It's actually a day's lesson in rallying. As I said, we've spent all day driving these cars. I've probably done, I don't know, an hour in in the, the, the GDB around the gravel track. And then at the end of it, did an assessment. So it is by far the best place you can learn to go rallying if you want to get into rallying. 